Hi everyone and welcome to my new video. My name is Susanne and today I want to make this setup for September in my bullet journal with you. And for that I'm going to make a cover spread and a gratitude log. And I'm going to make use of the products from the latest stationery box from Café Analog. Unfortunately all the boxes for this year are sold out, but I'm happy to tell you that if you see anything interesting that you like to have, the products are also sold separately after the box is released, so you can still visit their website and check it out. So without further ado, let's start watch the setup for September. But before we do that, I want you to ask if you like my videos, please give them a like. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you didn't do it yet, with hitting the subscription button below this video. And you can also hit the bell notification and then you get notified for any time I post a new video and then you miss out on nothing. So let's start watch the setup for September and enjoy watching! First let me show you what I'm going to make use of in my September cover page. Uh, these are all goodies from the latest stationery box from Café Analog, the September box. Uh, this is a box that comes out five times a year and for this year only December is left. This is my third stationery box and I'm happy with each and one of them. So let me show you what was inside and what we're going to use today. At first let me show you this stamp. This stamp is from Megumi Hori from Tokyo. And yeah, she designed the autumn related stamp, super cute in a heart shape with a letter and a little hedgehog and cute flowers, super cute stamp. And these are some handmade papers by Dyna Papery. I'm really in love with these little circles. Look how beautiful. Really, really lovely. I really like these. And then these, these are from Paper Poems from Chiara. She really also makes the most beautiful packages. She also has a Etsy shop. I will also link everything uh, down this video. So if you're curious, you can always check it out there. Look what she does. She has these stamps. They are from um, Petra Bricic. And she just stamps them, made little ephemera from them. Super cute. Look how nice they are made. And then these cute papers. And she has some uh, themed packs. She has like an autumn pack, but she also has spring themed packs. But they are really, really nice. Also with little quotes in it. For example, notice that autumn is more the season of the soul than of nature. Really lovely. Even the package, I don't know if you can see it, but even there she made some little drawings on it. How cute is it? Also really nice. And then these girl stickers. These are really, really nice. I, as soon as they come out, always like new series, I always buy them. <laughs> I really love these stickers. Look how cute, all autumn themed girl stickers. And let's not forget this tray where the contents are laying in. Oh, I forgot to show this washi. Also some really by Mori. Super cute autumn washi. And this tray, it's like made from cardboard, but it's painted with uh, urushi. It's like a Japanese painting technique. Really lovely. It's actually to put the pens in. It's a pen tray. <laughs> Look. So these are the products I'm going to use today in my spreads. I will put them aside for a while and I get my journal and let's get started. These are the girl stickers that I selected. Um, 
I find it really hard to choose. As soon as I saw these stickers, I really knew I had to have them. I really love the colors. I love autumn. <laughs> I'm really, I think, the autumn spreads, they give me so much energy always. I just love the oranges, greens, browns, like that together, the warm tones. It really makes me so happy. For a season itself, I like summer the most, honestly, but yeah, autumn, uh, like color-wise, I find autumn the best. And when I start my spreads, I always check like what I want to start off with. And I'm already sure I want to use one of these stickers. And then I look to the color palette. And yeah, it's also of course a bit like the autumn color palette. So I want to use some browns or brownie oranges, greens, and yeah, maybe blue, I'm not sure. But at least a bit like neutral, warm, earthy tones. Unfortunately, something went wrong while I was filming. My battery appeared to be empty from the phone that I'm shooting the video with. So I missed partly filming of the left pattern I made. But I will make the same thing on the right under of the page. So you will still see how I did it. I started off with some pumice stone that I swiped across the page. I use a very light hand, otherwise you really get dark smudges. And on top of that, I use tea dye. And I just really lightly yeah, swipe it across the page. And after that, I will use this stamp with a vintage photo. And yeah, I just make sure I stamp a little bit in the middle and avoid a bit the edges because I don't want the edges to be really sharp. And I just press on the stamp where I want it to be stamped. So I try to avoid edges like that. And I stamp a little bit extra and then after that I dry it with my heat tool. And because yeah, I noticed the pattern is a little bit darker than the left up, I decided to cover it a little bit up with more pumice stone and tea dye so it looks a bit more mixed in the background. And after that I like to use these metallic waxes. I didn't use them for a while actually, they were in my drawer uh, for quite a long time. I think because it was spring, summer, and now the fall is coming back again, I feel more into this, those warm gold and bronze tones. I try to recreate the look of a bit like an old wall with some old wallpaper that's coming a little bit off, like that look. And now I switch to some vellum paper because I want to stamp this stamp that was from the stationery box with gold embossing powder. And I love stamping it on vellum paper because yeah, it gives really a nice effect on your spread when it's finished. And what I do, I have embossing ink, I stamp with it and then I throw really fine gold embossing powder over it. And I apply quite a lot of powder because as you can see you can easily throw it back again so you won't spill anything. And then you at least have good coverage. And then I melt it with this embossing tool. I find it always looking so magic, like that melting process, like how it becomes so shiny. And I make another one with this chair from Elsie with Love. I actually also really love this stamp. I use it quite often. And I do the same process. I again Put some embossing ink and throw over a really large amount of embossing powder. I tap it a little and throw the remains back in the container so nothing is spilled. And you can say like why don't you stamp everything at once and then throw all the powder at once and then melt it at once. I did that before but somehow I get better results if I do it one by one. So I just do it like this. And this stamp from Lin Chia Ning, I just want to stamp with some Distress Oxide. I actually did once a testing on which inks are best for stamping on vellum. And it appeared to be that pigment based inks are best for using on vellum and Stazon ink. And a pigment based ink can be like Distress Oxide or... Um, Versa Magic, the Dew Drops, or Sodomame Beans, like that types of inks. 
The Distress ink also worked fine actually. The only inks that didn't work fine were oil based inks. They stayed really smudgy on the paper and yeah, it felt like it never dried anymore. So I wouldn't recommend that one, but yeah, the ones I uh, named, you can use them on vellum. I dry everything with this uh, embossing tool. You can also use a heating tool, but I had this one laying around. They both work fine actually for both embossing and for drying inks or paints. I once made a video actually about it on my Dutch YouTube channel about different type of heating tools where I compared that uh, Ranger heated tool which is just like a craft heating tool and also like a more expensive and a cheap embossing heating tool and they actually all three worked fine they all did the job in the end so whatever you have laying around it's all fine to use there is not that much difference so back to the spread i cut out meanwhile all the stems from the vellum and create a little ephemera from it and then i laid the girls on the page and now i'm picking the right color from that super cute handmade papers they're really lovely and of course i also want to use these little ephemera from dyna papery from that little pack that i showed earlier and i think i also use one of these papers i just love to create layers on my spreads I think my basic recipe for creating spreads is first create a background with some mixed media technique and then create a collage over it. And it's just because I like both. I like creating things, working with inks, paints and all the things, but I also really love making collages. And I just like the effect, how it turns out. It gives me such a rich feeling like creating some nice background and then yeah, put a collage over it. I am now uh, shoving a bit around like papers. It's from a little pack that I got for my birthday from Desiree from Café Analog. I'm super happy with it. There are such nice papers in it. They're also all handmade. And this part somehow always takes the most time for me. For this video I cut out a lot of shoving around, deciding where I want to put papers. I think I had yeah for two spreads two and a half hours of video material where i'm just creating um yeah and i cut it down of course to uh, half an hour otherwise <laughs> it's too long to watch for you but yeah i also really like to take my time for creating spreads i find it such a relaxing thing to do and right now this stamp is from kuri kinky and it's a month planner calendar stamp and I thought it would be matching because it's of course the September cover spread and yeah, calendar of course also belongs a bit to a cover spread like a monthly overview. I think this stamp is actually quite versatile. You can uh, use it of course like this, like as a whole, but if you want to use it for a specific date, you can also circle the month and the date you want to use. And even the face of the moon you can circle. So it's really a nice versatile uh, stamp, I really like it. I will also put the names of all the products I use in the video description below this video. So if you're curious about something, you can find it there. And from the girl stickers, I always like to cut off a bit of that white border. I like to keep some border because it also gives a bit like a distinction between the sticker and the rest of the page. But yeah, sometimes I find the border a bit too large and a bit too distracting. And also the time came to glue everything to the page. I shoved everything around and I think this is how it's going to be fine. So it also always gives a nice feeling to finish it off with gluing the items in place in the end. And before continuing with the right page, I first like to write the word September. I pre-wrote it with pencil, so I can decide how large the letters need to be, how the spacing is good. And I write it over with ink, and I use Diamine Coca Shimmer for it. It's a really nice brown ink with some gold shimmers in it. 
I'm afraid you can't really see it on video how nice this shimmer is, but in real it's really pretty. And it's also really matching with the vibe of the spread, I think. Which also has a bit like gold warm tones. And after I wrote the words, I also like to make some parts more thick, so it looks like written with a brush liner. It's always a bit like my uh, faux calligraphy trick. It is actually quite funny when you video yourself while journaling or creating something, you also see the process of how you are working and I really find out how chaotic I can work. I go from collaging to writing, back to collaging and sometimes it's not always easy to make a coherent, you know, <laughs> easy flowing video of uh, how I work. But yeah, in the same time, it is also how I work and how I create my spreads. I wonder if you recognize this, if you also go from the one thing to the other, back to the same thing and back again. Uh, or if you just do it nice step by step and really <laughs> work on one task at the same time. And meanwhile I took these super cute tile stamps that I stamped on the vellum and after that cut out. These are a bit symbolizing for the renovation that is coming on like next week. Uh, I told you in the last video we will have a large renovation in our house and it's next week starting. And I thought it's also nice to have some yeah, items coming back that also covers a bit at renovation. So I have that little chair but also the tiles. When I was making this spread itself, in the day we needed to pick out new tiles for our bathroom since the tiles that we picked had 11 months delivery time and yeah, that's of course too long so we needed to pick different ones. And actually we took really a different color than that we had before but I'm happy with the decision that we made in the end and I am sure it will turn out very nice. I always really like to use some symbolisms in my spread for stuff that's going around in my life to let things come back. Uh, it also helps me with creating for my feeling. I just yeah pick what I feel like or what keeps me busy at the moment. So yeah, I think uh, if I don't write anything, I still can see from my spreads like what was going my, in my life at the moment. I'm curious if you also recognize this, if you also use symbolisms in your spreads. I would really like to hear in the comments uh, how you work. I always like to hear how other people journal or how their process is. I can find that also really inspiring. And I really love the feeling of sharing information or sharing tips and tricks. So yeah, if you want to share something, I uh, always like to hear it in the comments. Also, if you have any questions, you can also always ask. I'm always uh, happy to answer. And now I went to the second page. The cover page was finished and I want to make also a gratitude look. And I picked some pumice stone that I also started off with in my first spread. And I swipe it over the background. And after that, I swipe also the tea dye. I want to create a little bit of the same vibe as I created on the cover page so it becomes a bit like theme kind of thing with the setup. I don't really work in themes honestly. Some people do which I find also super cool and nice to see. But I can never manage to keep up one theme for a whole month. I did it in the beginning actually when I just started out journaling but at certain point I just let it go and just create from how I feel at the moment. That's just what works best for me, but yeah, everybody does it different and everything is good, honestly. There's no right or wrong in creating art. On the cover spread, I made the same pattern as what I'm making now. And I like the left upper corner much better than the right down corner. And it was because I stamped there less neat. So I try to recreate it here a little bit more. So I just, yeah, make a bit more of a distorted, distressed look. And after I stamped, I decided to cover some parts with embossing powder, also in the same gold as I used before. 
I thought it would be nice if there are some parts that's with gold embossing. So it looks a bit more playful. I don't know why I did that. I just felt like it at the moment. And as you can see, <laughs> when I did it, I really didn't like how it turned out. And that is also how I work a bit. I just come up with an idea, I try it out, and sometimes it works super nice, and sometimes it just backfires on me. And then I need to find a solution on how I need to cover it up, or how I can change it, or make the best out of the situation. In that way, journaling also really helps me to let go a bit more. I can be in my daily life really perfectionistic. And before I was also much more perfectionistic also in my journal. I was really afraid to make mistakes and yeah, was trying to avoid it. But the cliches are really true. You really learn from your mistakes. And yeah, my experience, if you focused on being perfect and try to avoid mistakes you also don't have room to grow or to come into a creative flow and yeah just try out things and i think that's also a really nice part of journaling just letting go do whatever you feel try out things in my experience like when i make mistakes there's always a way to cover up in that way i really love the saying from bob ross He's talking about happy little accidents, so not even about mistakes. And I also want to approach it actually in the same way. Maybe covering up is even the wrong wording for this. I just try to continue creating until I'm happy with the result. And in this case, I applied the metallic wax, which I was planning already to apply, and I put also some papers which I was also already planning and I think like this the background looks really nice with what I'm creating on top of it and right now I'm using my own stamp which I designed myself for a cafe analog challenge and it's saying increase your serotonin the stamp is a serotonin molecule and serotonin is a neurotransmitter that's active in your brain and it's also active as a mood stabilizer and it is said that you can increase your serotonin by being in nature, meditate, uh, doing some activities. And that's also all what's coming back in this stamp. The pen symbolizes journaling, which you can also see as a form of meditation. But also the lotus flower is the symbolism for meditation. And the little leaves are a symbol for being in the nature. And yeah, with this stamp it's just like the symbol for, yeah, increasing your serotonin and feeling more happy. And I'm really happy with how it turned out. So that's a little uh, backstory from this stamp. <laughs> There's quite a lot of uh, symbols packed into it. But I think the stamp is also really matching with the gratitude look that I'm making. Because the gratitude look I always use to yeah, write down on a daily basis things that make me happy or that I'm grateful for. And yeah, it's also in that way kind of mindful and positive and also gives me positive feelings. And the stamp that I'm sticking now to the page is from Jesslyn Padilla. She also makes the most beautiful stamps with such intricate designs. And I thought this one was also so matching with a bit the cozy house theme that's going on on this spread and the last spread. It's like a little embroidery hoop with a flower in it and yeah, I think it's really nice. And right now I'm cutting out this butterfly from the pate from Lin Chia Ning. And normally I always cut off um, that gold speckles that are around it, but I thought it would be nice to leave them on right now. Because they give some sparkle in that snow globe and I thought it would be nice like that. And also here I want to use the leftover tiles that uh, I still had laying around. And I also use this stamp with collect every moment it is saying. These are from Pen's Paper Planner. I think they're also really cute and nice. And this stamp is also from Jesslyn Padilla. It's that little floral vase. I'm really happy with this stamp also. I also use it quite often. And I just stamp it with a tea dye distress oxide. 
and I cut out these leaves from Loi Design. I really like this washi tape also. And what I like about washi tape is that it blends so beautifully in your paper. Like the white parts you hardly see, so it's almost like it's drawn onto your paper. I really like it. And I also put something on the left side. And then it's time to write. I have here new ink from Ferrisul Press. This is Oyster Hour. On the previous page I also used this pen, but I didn't fill it. I just dipped the point in the ink and then I wrote the word September with it. I got this tip actually from someone at the Dutch pen show. She never fills up her pens, she only dips her pens in inks. So she can write whenever she wants with different colors. I thought it was really a nice tip actually, to just dip it and be able to change colors really fast. But this color I really love and I yeah, just like to write with it. So I decided to fill my pen with this color. And the alphabet I'm using is Spencerian Penmanship. So if you also like to recreate these kind of letters, you can Google Spencerian Penmanship and you get the whole alphabet. And you can also try it out yourself. And this is how it turned out. This is my cover page for September and my gratitude log page. I hope you enjoyed watching the process of making these spreads. Again, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask in the comments. I also like to hear what you think in the comments. I want to thank you for watching and I hope to see you next time. Bye bye!